Designing Custom Reports. This section will cover using the Query Wizard, Function Wizard, and Edit SQL options to design custom reports or modify existing reports. Each installation of Liberty Reports for Sage 100 Contractor includes a template called New Report. This template is designed to emulate our other stock reports that come with the software. Once the report has been opened, we see it has the standard information, admin, sample values, and report worksheets. Our template also includes a worksheet named SQL. This sheet is included for advanced users who are adept at writing SQL queries and wish to create a query that can then be referenced in a Liberty Reports function. Doing so can reduce report load times as the function would run only against the results of the SQL query and not against the entire database table. Since we won't be going that in-depth into report design in this video, we'll hide the worksheet for now. Additional training on custom SQL statements and how to utilize them within functions can be obtained by contacting our sales team. Our example today will demonstrate how to create a query that will return a list of GL transactions based on a specific date range. We'll start by going to our admin page and creating our search criteria. We'll go ahead and create a label for start date and end date, and we'll apply some quick formatting to show where the input cells are. Let's go ahead and name each input cell as start date and end date. That way they can be referenced later without having to know the exact sheet name and cell location. While we're here, we'll go ahead and enter values of May 1st, 2011 and May 31st, 2011. Now that we've got our search criteria ready to go, we can move to the reports worksheet. To create a new query, we just select the cell we want to use as the start of the query and use the Query Wizard option from the Liberty Reports toolbar. This will display a list of available tables from which data can be queried. You can use the scroll bar on the right to navigate the list, you can use the up-down arrows on your keyboard, or if you know the name of the table, simply start typing it in. Today we're looking for the GL Transaction table. You'll also notice that we get a small preview of the data contained within the table to help us verify we are querying the correct information. Once we've found the right table, we click Next, and we're presented with a list of columns that are contained within the table. To select the columns, simply click each one, or use the up-down arrows in the spacebar. For this example, we'll select Record Number, Transaction Number, Date, Description, Vendor, and Amount, and click Next. Now we are presented with the option to add conditions. Since we only want to view transactions greater than our start date, and less than the end date, we'll click Add Condition. Then we can select the Date column, use the Greater or Equal as our comparison operator, and under Compare To, let's go ahead and select Cell Reference. Notice that we also have the option to use a literal value or another database field. For the Compare To value, we could use the Cell Selector tool, but since we gave it a named reference, we can just select that reference from the drop-down list and click OK. Since we need to compare our results to the end date as well, we'll click Add Condition again. Then we'll follow the same steps as last time, except this time we will use the Less or Equal comparison, and we'll select End Date from our cell reference list and click OK. The last condition will make sure the query does not return any transactions where the vendor equals zero. To do so, we click Add Condition one more time, select Vendor as our column, use the not equal comparison, and we'll leave the compare to value type as a literal value this time, and leave zero for the value and click OK. Now that our conditions have been defined, we can click Finish to complete the query wizard. And we've just completed using the query wizard to make a custom report. Let's go ahead and apply some quick formatting to make things look a bit more professional. Now that our query is done, you'll notice that the vendor column only shows the vendor ID and not the name. We can add that information by adding a lookup function to our query results. So let's insert a new column to the left of column G. We'll give it a column header of vendor name, and then we'll select the first row of our new column under the column header and select Function Wizard from the Liberty Reports toolbar. 
We're now shown a list of available functions that are specific to Liberty Reports. When you select a function, information will appear that describes the proper use and intended purpose of each one. For this example, we'll use the lookup function, which as we see in the wizard, will return the value for the specified column in the row uniquely identified by the table's primary key. Once we click Next, we're presented with a list of available tables. Since we know the name is in the AP Vendors table, that's the table we will select. Clicking Next brings us to the list of columns we wish to display with the function, so we will select Vendor Name and click Next. We're then asked to define the primary key that will tie the function to the rest of the query results. Since our key will be the Vendor ID, we will leave the type as Cell Reference, and we'll use the Cell Selector tool to select the Vendor ID immediately to the left of our function. Our last step are some basic formatting options. Since we have already defined our column header, we can leave the Include Column Captions unselected, and we can leave the Fill Down Formulas option selected so the function will appear for each result within the query. Clicking Finish inserts the new function for us, and we now have the vendor name associated with each transaction record. From here, if we wanted to change our date range, we could just go back to the admin worksheet change our search conditions, and use the Refresh option in the Liberty Reports toolbar. If, for some reason, we wanted to add additional columns to our query results, we can use the Edit SQL option. Selecting this will provide a window showing the exact syntax of the SQL query we created using the Query Wizard. If you're handy with SQL, you can use this to add more complexity to the query, like joining tables, reorganizing the column layouts, and adding additional WHERE statements. For more training on using the SQL Editor, feel free to contact our sales team. Now that our report is complete, we can save the report as a macro-enabled template to our Custom Reports folder so other users could access the report from the Liberty Reports desktop application. Simply use the Save option within Excel, select the file type as XLTM or Macro-enabled template, Browse to the Custom Reports folder we created in Section 1, and go ahead and click Save. At this point, Excel will prompt us to decide if we would like to clear the data before saving the template and automatically refresh the data whenever the template is opened. We recommend using No for this prompt. Our new report is now saved to the Liberty Reports desktop and ready to be accessed by our other users. Thank you for watching and we hope you found this information very useful.